Hello once again, and I'm going to do something a little different today. This is, I'm going to show you the, um, a little how to uh, use WinUI E, um, just basic, like basic controls, um, what you should really know, and well, what I basically know, basically, <laughs> that's what I'm going to show you. So the current version I'm using is WinUI E 3.2. Um, I think this is um, the latest version of WinUI. It's the 64-bit version. Um, just got this today, actually, um, to replace. I was using 2.2 or something, or 2.1. I don't know. I can't remember. But so basically, we're just going to go through the the basics, really, because I don't know too much about it. But I know how to configure, like how to use an A500 or an A1200. And that's it that's what I really need to do if I'm playing games so so first of all you need to go to path so this is where I store all my kick rom my kickstart roms um, I have got a few of them I've got a while well, I've actually got quite a lot of kickstart roms um, for mainly every Amiga out there um, so that's where you keep them if you get like a bunch of them create a folder to store your kickstart roms in um, then you can um, do that and go to where your kick ROMs are then you go to um, I think you've got to rescan ROMs and that will scan the ROMs for you um, so you can see I've got quite a lot so I've got ROMs to go right an Amiga 500 Amiga 500 again for some reason 500 plus a 600, a 1000, 1000, 1200, 3000, 4000, whatever that is, 4000T, whatever that is, a CD32 and a CDTV. So that's quite a lot I can use, but I'll be mainly using the A500 and the A1200. That's what I basically use. So here, configuration files. So make sure you have a folder for your configuration folders. Screenshots, rest of them really are not really important, so I don't bother with them. So that's where your paths are. Quick start. Right, sometimes I use this because um, sometimes I cannot get games to work in my configuration. So this is where this helps me. So 500, if I want to use an A500 older game, because not a lot of games work on the A1200. So here we are. So. A500, I've got my A500 Plus ROMs, I've got all the ROMs, even that, besides the R, except for the Arcadia Multi Select System. I don't have no ROMs for these at all. I can't get them, I don't know where to get them, and I don't know what they do. So, they're not really important. So, OnePlay 3.0 and OnePlay 2.11, I do not know anything about the Arcadia. So, it's not really an important thing. So we'll stick that back on. Oh, oh, so what's all this? So hang on a minute, something I didn't say. If we put that one back on A500, you can actually choose a configuration. So you can have 1.3 OCS, original chipset, 512 kilobyte, chips plus whatever, where, yeah, most common. So then you can have your ECS, Angus, Agnus, whatever that is, ECS, enhanced chipset. Then you have your OCS again and Agnes, whatever Agnes is, I do I do not know. I don't know the test technical aspects really of an Amiga, just like all I know was the Amiga 500, Amiga 1200, so on and so on. That's all I know, I don't know really much about the technical aspects of the computer itself. So, okay, so compatibility versus required CPU power. I always keep it on best compatibility, you've got more chance of games working. Um, host configuration, uh, I never touched that, um, so this is basically, you can have up to um, two disk drives, but if you're running an Amiga, uh, an Amiga 500, everything uses DFO, DF1, forget it, because it don't use DF1 for some reason, even if you do put two disks in, it'll always go ask you for DF0 and so you can select a image file wherever you see it. I've got mine in a folder all my games are together so we're not going to select any ROM at the moment so that's your quick configuration 
Um, so now we're going to go, or quick start rather, now we're going to go to configurations. So I've made a few configurations. So uh, let's have a look at my um, A500 configuration. So I load my A configure my A500 configuration. Actually, I'll load my A1200 configurations because I've got more stuff going on that. So basically, we can set it all up if you want. If you know your Amigas inside and out, you'll know what to do. Um, but a lot of majority of people say, oh, they don't like emulators. They like the real hardware, which I can totally understand because obviously playing it on original hardware is better. But I have no gripes with emulations one whatsoever because one thing, I don't have the space or the money to buy retro computers, especially retro games, because they're not exactly cheap these days. And you know, an emulator suffices very well indeed, and it runs like the real um, piece of hardware anyway. So I don't really care if I've got the real hardware or not these days. The emulator is the next best thing for me. Anyway, so basically this is in my uh, 1200 configuration. So I've got the processor on the 68020, if that's right. I don't know. It seems to work very well. So basically, I don't think I've touched a lot of it. So I don't bother touching what I don't know. So if we go to the chipset, obviously the A1200 at the AGA tip chipset. So I don't know what all this does. I'm not, I don't even bother touching that. So the advanced chipset, don't touch that. Don't know what it all does, so ROM. So obviously the, the kickstart ROM was the 3.0 A1200, the Rev 39106. Might have been back in the day, but that's the closest I think it, I've got, so it does very well. RAM, so basically chip RAM I know at two megabytes. Uh, my A1200 didn't have nothing else back in the day. With RAM wise, it only had the two megabytes of chip RAM. Floppy drives, so you can have up to four in total TF1, TF2, two, and um, I think you can have additional new floppy disk. Oh no, maybe not to create an image. Okay, so you've got four, four floppy disk drives which do come in handy because on the 1200 it does access more than, more than DF0 and it does work if you've got like at least two or more discs which is good right something to be wary of floppy di disk floppy drive emulation speed I've got it on turbo you can have it on 100% compatible and you can have it faster I always have mine on turbo speed sometimes not all games work or load up if you've got it on turbo speed which I found out always best to have it on 100% compatible um, and then you know sometimes unless it's got a disk error it'll work because I've noticed that with a few games but, I, but some, I always do that if turbo if it fails on turbo speed always revert to 100% compatible so down here you can change this but I don't touch none of this stuff I wouldn't recommend it right CDs and hard drives right I have two hard drive configurations. I, I did this years ago. Um, originally done this one. Um, done it well, over ten years ago, I think. When first, when I first had Win UAE. This one is at uh, 531 megabytes. Yeah, megabytes. <laughs> and that one's thousand megabytes. I did that after for some reason because I think I lost that that um, hard drive so I thought I lost it so I did that one then I found that one for some reason I don't know so now I've got two I mean 531 megabytes was quite a lot for back in the day I had a hard drive on my Amiga 1200 back in the day and that was 120 megabytes I think 120 megabytes is probably equivalent to two terabytes now for the Amiga because it didn't require that much space considering the disk floppy disk image was only um, 880 kilobytes is it I don't know I can't bloody remember such a long time ago so that's just, that's that um, so expansions see so I don't know nothing about that and the RTTG board don't know nothing about that so let's get on to um, what I'll consider I know what you know so here we are it's my screen it's on 
running on my 4K monitor, which is well, you don't use it. I don't use it that resolution, believe me. Well, you can choose it to your graphics card, which I don't know why. I mean, what is an Amiga going to do with a GTX 760? <laughs> Even that graphics card ain't that powerful on this PC. Um, but anyway, I always use my um, uh, configuration in a window so I can see it recording because I use Bandicam, um, but everyone's got their own recording choice. So I've got it set on 800 by 600 and it records very well. The yeah, screen is pretty good, what I can see. So basically, I don't touch none of that, don't touch that. Got it on line mode double for some reason. Perhaps it makes the screen bigger, I think. Um, so basically this is what I've got it on. A lot of this I don't touch. Um, so that's display, it's now sound. So once again, you can have it, you can choose the sound coming out of your desired sound card or whatever. It is coming out of my Sound Blaster ZXR, so that's coming through my um, my speakers or my headphones. It's not coming through my monitor. You can change it if you want to. You can change it to the that's going from my graphics card or um, the onboard sound system on the motherboard. So I'll keep it on the ZXR. Um, so then you can change. Pooler, that's the original Amiga sound chip, CD or whatever, I'll just leave it like that. Sound buffer size, I'll keep it on one. So if you put it on too much, it, it goes out of sync. Um, if you go like nine or ten, just keep it as one. Channels, keep it on stereo, I don't bother changing it because the original Amiga was in stereo. 100% um, separation. Um, give it the true stereo sound one thing comes out of one speaker something comes out of the other speaker you know it gives it that authentic Amiga sound um, flo and then we get to the floppy disk emulate sound emulation you can you can turn them on zero if you want but I like to have them on so I can hear it sometimes because I know it's loading <laughs> when you are built in I don't really know what that does I'll just keep it on that probably something to do with this something to do with that oh that just turns on the sound on or off anyway so so you can either turn them down to zero or turn it on that way don't know what none of this does don't bother with that so now we're going to get onto game ports so port one is your mouse um, so I don't know you can choose auto fire I suppose you can choose all that I just don't bother it's port two I've got two joysticks I use so it's this is not the joystick I use to do all my reviews because it is an, a retro joystick but it's just too clicky, it's too loud, I don't really like using it, but it's the one that's plugged in at the moment. So you can choose different joysticks if you want. Um, once again, or you can choose, um, or you, sometimes what I do, I sometimes use the keys as a joystick, like the num numeric keys, and that sometimes, and that does work quite well because sometimes I do use that. Because um, I've got my other joystick unplugged, it's not showing. Okay. So I keep put that back on speed link. What's this? Oh, I don't know what that was. It's just come up with something. X A. Eh? See, I don't know. Whatever that is, it keeps on coming up. Right. So I don't know what this does. Extended parallel port joystick adapter. I had one back in the day for my Amiga. Um, X arcade layout information. Right. Don't have to worry about that. Mouse settings. Magic Mouse, don't know what none of this does. Right, so IO ports. So this is, um, you can have a printer. I had a printer for my Amiga back in the day. <laughs> it was only a crappy black and white print. It actually weren't crappy back then. I'll ignore that, my phone's going mad. Just means I've got a message from YouTube, I think. And I think I know who it is. <laughs> um, so that's my printer I've got config on it at the moment, that is my printer, but I've never tested it, the Amiga 2 printer. Yeah, the printer I had back in the day was a Canon Bubblejet BJ10, I think, and I still remember that because it was my first ever printer I owned back in the day for the Amiga. Well, it was the first ever printer I owned. Um, so none of this, so I don't bother touching. Inputs, obviously this is your joystick again, so you, I don't bother touching none of that. Outputs. Um, don't bother touching none of that. Your filters, don't touch none of that. Disk swapper, don't bother with that. 
miscellaneous don't bother with that and this PRI and extensions I obviously don't bother with that either so yeah I have to say this is a great emulator for the Amiga um, I do have another one wind fellow but no way it's advanced as this that one's like rubbish compared to this this is absolutely fantastic emulator for the Amiga so mind you if you've got the quick start you'll have no problems because the quick start helps you quite a lot in it and does load up a lot of games majority of games anyway so go to the quick start makes sure you got you go you got to have your um, kickstart ROMs because you have to find them on the website somewhere else it don't come with it doesn't come with the when you are itself you have to go out and find the kick kickstart ROMs and obviously any disk image you want to use and obviously configure your own um, setups and that's it really that's all I'm going to cover um, so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it helps you out if you've got an Amiga emulator um, the emulator itself is free to download um, so I think you can go to the WinUAE website and you can download it for nothing but obviously you can, it won't come with any kickstart ROMs or any images you have to get them somewhere else and there's plenty of websites out there you can get them um, but I've had all mine uh, kickstart ROMs for a long long time now and I obviously don't know where to get them anymore so don't ask me to to know to ask don't ask me if you if I can get them because I can't because I can't remember basically I've got them on my computer anyway I'm going to end this now thank you so much for watching till next time and goodbye <laughs>